Five, four, three, two, one. Good, Good morning, guys. Exagerado. We are here on a Monday night for us, Tuesday morning for you guys. Yep. I'm really excited. Why? I'm really, really excited. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. That, I will rejoice and be glad in Yes, it. that's the first reason why. Lord, this is the day. This is the you know, every day, day belongs to the Lord. You know that? Made. The yes. enemy doesn't make days. He's no creator. There's only one creator, and his name is God. Yes. And his name is Jesus, to be Amen. more specific, actually. But and one other reason other than that is because of this. Blurry. I know. Let me do this. Does that work? Oh, never mind. I thought it would work. The book, guys. Who are you? Identity in Christ. Look at that. All those weeks of Bible study we did for the last two months, two and a half months or so. All those weeks that you guys endured as well, together, guys. It's now a book, guys. Um, Officially. It's, um, I'm taking pre-orders. I'm not going to explain why, because I know sometimes, well, not sometimes, I'm, people are wondering, is it on Amazon? Yeah. The answer is yes. You could get it on Amazon right now, also as an ebook. Yeah. But I'm taking pre-orders because I ordered author copies, and the author copies, I ordered a whole box. It's going to take a couple weeks for me to get them. So if you want a signed copy, you have to get it from our website. And there's a pre-order um, little click thing for PayPal mm -hmm. and Venmo. And um, so if you do that and pre-order it, the moment I get that box, I will send them out. I'll sign them and send them out to you. Uh, but if you don't care about signatures, you can go to Amazon right now and get it. Yeah. You know? Mine came in today, matter of fact. Um, I had it sent to a lockbox out here where we're at. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it came in today, guys. As we're driving here, it said it arrived. So, man, I'm really excited about this. Who are you? Identity in Christ. And, um, wow. Eight years of teaching this in a seminar. Eight years of teaching this over the phone, on Zoom, in person. And it's now a book, guys. So, <clears throat> anyways. Whoa. I'm excited too because um, Pastor Carlos also did um, the forward. He did the forward. It was really, really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was really awesome and really nice of him to have done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, praise God for that. Yeah. So, anyways, guys. Um, I can't scratch my back. Scratch your back. Yeah. Up, 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 up. The other side. Down. More into the middle. Up. Right. Harder. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Back started itching. <laughs> you know how when it hits you all of a sudden mm -hmm. and you just have to scratch it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything else before we dive into the scripture? Um, besides the fact that I really, 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 you know, we had um, choir practice on Saturday. And um, I guess everybody was busy because, you know, we didn't have a big turnout. But yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, those who were supposed to be at choir practice will be there this Sunday, right, immediately following Sunday service and be there for choir practice, you know. Um, so choir practice for the children immediately following service. And then right after the children are going to be the adults. So guys, um, if you are local and if you are going to be in the Christmas choir, I need you there for practice. So I'm letting you know now, and I will be posting it as well, choir practice. So be there or be square, guys. Yeah. So that's it. Um, oh, wait, one last thing. Yeah. Uh, we are having our first uh, Wednesday youth Bible study for this Wednesday because... Um, Remember that they're switching from Wednesday, uh, no. from, from Friday to Wednesday, and they will be starting this Wednesday, guys. Um, they will no longer, so do not bring your youth on Friday because they will not be there. Youth will not be there. They will be there on Wednesday. 
So Wednesday will be that which will be December 1st, guys. Um, so they will be there. If you plan on bringing your youth, stay for our Wednesday Bible study. That's an amazing time for them to to be there in youth and you be in the Bible study, which is awesome because we get to see you at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. Seven o'clock. Be there. Mm -hmm. So youth and and youth and, and our bible study That's youth, our, no youth and young adults yes youth and young adults are no longer on friday no. now on wednesday yeah from now and on. the entrance is through the back okay guys yeah all right that's it now um i wanted to read the entire bible tonight this morning well i'll let him do that and i'm gonna go get rest okay okay we'll just read a few verses come on you convinced me Deuteronomy 6, guys. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. Open yeah. up your Bibles. Yeah. You guys ready? Bam, look at that. David's going to read out of the New King James, and I'll be reading out of the message. This is really, 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 really good. I guess I should have had it ready. You guys ready? Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at verse 6, all the way through verse 9. And it says this, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. This is the Lord speaking to Moses. And he's telling Moses to tell this to all of Israel. He says, You, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. All right. I'll be reading out of the message, guys, and it says, Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside of you, and then get them inside your children. Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into bed at night. Tie them on your hands and foreheads as a reminder. Inscribe them on the doorpost of your homes and on your city gates. Amen. There's a verse that, that there's, some, there's words that the Lord said right before he said that. So he's saying, he's telling, tell the people to basically have these words always, always at all times for your children, for in your front of your house, when you wake up, when you go to bed. In between your eyes, put it on your hand, you know, and it's this verse, which is actually the two verses before it. Where does it start in yours? Four and six? Yeah, right? Yeah. And these are the words that he says to write and always remember. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then, verse five, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Attention, Israel. God, our God, God, the one and only. Love God, your God, with your whole heart. Love him with all that's in you. Love him with all you've got. You know, the time at the time of the Old Testament, you know, these people took this literally. They actually wrote that verse, and they would put them on this little, however, I don't think they had paper, whatever it is that they had, they would write that verse, tie leather to it and literally walk around with a leather strap with that verse on their foreheads because it says put it between your eyes yeah. they would have it on their, their hand and they would wrap it like this and they would walk everywhere because of that verse so they would always remember when they looked at their hand they'd remember that verse our lord god is one to love with love him with all your heart or your soul your might or your strength they would have it here to remember to remind everybody else they would write it on their door of their homes you know but it's like i, I think that's a beautiful thing, but that could easily become, I mean, how many, how many uh, famous singers that don't serve God have crucifixes or word crosses? Yeah, yeah. It becomes nothing more than cultural and symbolic. Yeah. And that's it. And, and I think that the same thing happens today, guys. It's almost like, like, I love you, you know? Because you say I love you and people people sometimes just don't even believe it because they hear it so nonchalantly, you know. Because mm -hmm. I notice sometimes I say I love you to, to some people and, you know, 
I don't hear it back or whatever. And I think it's because they, they hear it so often, often thrown out there just like that. And, yeah. and I just kind of feel like, you know, maybe they just hear it so much or something that they just, I don't know. It's like, cause it's thrown out there so loosely, yeah. you know, and because you, you truly, you say it really feeling it from your heart, but then it's said so much that it's just, it just doesn't mean much to, to yeah. some people anymore. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I get I get why the Jewish people did this. But I, now and, and now looking back, we understand that God was trying to say something so much deeper. Yeah. He's like, listen, I'm not asking you to literally write the verse on a rock and put it between your eyes. Like they actually had a weird name. It's called a phylactery. Really? Yeah, that that's what they used to call it that. And they would they would um what happened was just like religion, right? Everybody tries to outdo each other. Yeah. So somebody wrote it on a little stone. So the next guy says, well, I'm going to write it on a bigger stone. I'm gonna... So next thing you know, they have this big old stone with this verse, you know, thinking that that was going to make them look more holy. You know, they, they wanted to look more holy to other people rather than being holy to God. Just like everybody wants to do each other, outdo each other with a bigger church and a bigger church and a bigger church. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. You know, and, and so... If the Hebrews fell into that, then we could also fall into that. And we have to be really careful about that because when the Lord says, put it between your eyes, he's saying, put it in here, put it in your mind. He doesn't say, don't, what's the use of writing it on your door and you see it on the way out or you see it on the way in if you don't carry it within you? Put it in your heart. Put it in your heart, yeah. you know, because your mind, your heart are, are, are connected. Let his word, the what, what word is... Hero Israel, our Lord God is one and love him with, with everything. Yeah. So when you wake up, he wants you to love him with everything. That means trusting. Because yeah. trust and love can't be separated. You know, so it's like you have to love and, and because you love God, you trust him completely. When you wake up and when you go to bed, Everywhere you go, everything you do, he says, put it on your right hand. Why? Because your right hand is your strength. So everything you do in word and deed, you know, do this in, in, in the belief of, of who it is that we believe in. You know, and, and I think, man, people can, it's almost like this, right? And unfortunately, this is what happens uh, sometimes in, in a church setting. It could be a house church. It could be a Bible study is you can quickly fall into the routine of things or what's the word is that the right word when you when you just kind of fall in line with you go go with the what's the word over the floor no no you guys know what i'm saying right no that yeah you go with the flow that's not what i wanted to say but that it means the same thing same Repet repetition repetitive no that's not it either routine well, yeah, I mean, I'm saying all of that means the same thing, so it doesn't really matter the exact wording, you know. And we can fall into that with reading the Bible. Oh, I, I'm Christian, so I got to read the Bible. But you ain't really reading the Bible. You're just reading it. You know, I, I, I could read a newspaper article and in two minutes forget what I just read. And we read the word like that. You know, same thing like you're saying. You, you could say, I love you. But what does it really mean unless you live it out? Yeah. A spouse can say, I love you all you want in the morning, but what are you doing when they're not around? It doesn't mean nothing then. You know? So it's like, why say it and not live it? Because it becomes an obligation. Yeah. It just becomes routine. Yeah. And you don't ever want to be in a place where you fall into routine with God. You know, and, and thank God that he's a God of mercy. Thank God that he's a God that he says, I have new mercies for you every day. So like if, if that has been you, like let's say you're like, man, that's me. Well, guess what? You're alive. You're breathing. Repent. Simple as that. Just say, Lord, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Because we don't ever want to be the guy with the biggest Bible or the most tithe or the loudest voice during worship. You know, or, you know, just like all these different things that we do to try to almost outdo each other, almost as if we're impressing God. And God is not impressed by those things. Yeah. You remember that old story I shared where 
it's just a story. I don't even doubt it's true. It's just a little story, you know, of a man that he's all, he, he's homeless. He's, his, he's all ragged. His clothes is all tore up. And he hears beautiful music coming out of a church. And he goes and sits in the back, you know, and he just like, man, Lord, uh, I wish I had beautiful, because everybody had robes, matching robes, you know, choirs do. And, and, and he's just singing in the back. And he has a horrible voice can't sing, dressed, you know, stinks. And he and his prayer during that worship, he, he was worshiping with all of his heart, all of his heart. And after he was just broken and crying, everybody had left. And he's like, Lord, maybe someday, maybe someday you have mercy, Lord God. And maybe someday I'll, I'll be, I'll be washed and I'll be clean and I'll be groomed and I'll have one of those gowns so, so I can sing. Maybe someday I'll have a beautiful voice so you can hear me sing. And, and, and the Lord spoke and said, son, that whole service, your voice is the only one I heard. Yeah. Because it's the heart. He doesn't care how beautiful your voice is or how nice the, the cathedral is or not, not or, how, or how, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with nice things, man. But when you got to put it in its place, don't ever try to, we, we should never try to impress God with material things because he created everything. How's he going to be like, like, it's like, like, remember how we're on the sermon where he, um, was it Saturn? That, that rains diamonds? Yeah. So it's like trying to impress God with a diamond. And Jupiter. He's trying to impress God with a diamond. He's like, I made a whole planet made a diamond. What's your little diamond supposed to do? You know, and, you know, those things do not impress God. He's a creator of them. Matter of fact, he, he told the prophet one time, Prophet Samuel, he says, you judge by the outward appearance, I judge by the heart. You know, and, and we got to always keep that in mind, guys, is, is serving God is not a competition. It's not a race. Serving God is not a scripture that we memorize. It's a scripture that we live. It's living this thing out. You want him to be pleased with you? Then don't make it about impressing anyone else or anything. Serve God with all your heart. And, love be, and, be, and you will only serve God with all your heart if you love him with all of your heart. You know, today I met... Um we met this uh, this gentleman's little girl, mm. you know, and she was so young, you know, uh, what, maybe 10, 12? I don't know. I'm going to say 12 years old. And I'm um, bad at guessing kids' ages. I know. I, I'm going to say maybe between 10 and 12 years old. But sometimes we can learn so much from a child, you know, because their hearts are so innocent. But you know, um, they they can teach us so much. They can teach us their their innocence can teach us so much of, of the love of Christ. Yeah. Um, especially when when they love God so much, because um, she she proceeded to tell me how she needed to let go of an ex friend, a young girl who was just treating her so unfairly. You know, and I just listened to her. I listened to her little problem, you know, yeah. while I was having hot chocolate with her right outside in the cold, you know. And she says, you know, she goes, but it's okay because, you know, um, I got Jesus, you know, and Jesus, uh, and, and, and Jesus knows all, and he got my back. And I listened to her, and, and, and she says, you know what, um, I can over, I can, I can overcome it with, o overcome it with, um, with love. Mm -hmm. And that was the most beautiful thing that, that I can hear from a child's mouth. And, and it was so precious to hear that, you know, because if a child can figure it out, why is it that we as adults and so many adults out there can't even figure that out sometimes, you know? Yeah. It's true. It's, it's, it's a shame that sometimes as adults, we can't figure things out. 
you know, and, and a child can, you know, um, it's a shame guys. Yeah. It is. So I think this verse, let's not make the same mistake that Israel made, yeah. you know, and let's truly love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and all our might. Um, and guess what? When you when you really love love someone through all of those things, there is no room left to 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 love the enemy. There's no there's nothing left. If you love God with all your soul, if you love God with all your strength, that means everything you do in your strength, everything you do in your might is going to be unto God. Yeah. To love God with all your mind. Think about that. That's what he's seeking. He is seeking, matter of fact, he says, um, he's seeking true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So. Amen. But yeah, guys, um, not a long devotional, but I hope this scripture spoke to you, spoke to, to your spirit, you know, and um, we always, you know, pray that you guys are, are, about to have a great day, about to have a blessed day. Amen. We've had a long day, but it's it's all good. We're together, Amen. you know. And um, and shout out to Little Miss Lady, the one that I had my hot chocolate with. I totally, your name is already, girl, I forgot your name, but I enjoyed my hot chocolate with you, Little Lady. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, may God bless you. You're yeah. an amazing young lady. Pray mm -hmm. many blessings over you. I want to thank Dave and his wife from Yarrington also yes, for the absolutely. breakfast, absolutely. late breakfast slash lunch. Yes, we. And what was the sister's name? We we that, just that that they brought. Oh, I'm bad with names. Yeah, guys. we met so many people, but and then we had an amazing town time with Yasvel and in in Josue. No, we came. said that though. Already. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but I I talked to her today and I was oh. like, oh, man, coming down from Virginia, Virginia City. Um, which was beautiful, you know, those turns. Yeah, I'm going to show that video. Yeah, yeah, but guys, um, you know, we've just been, you know, meeting people, and I got to see my my good friend, um, Aaliyah, who um, we picked up a few crafts from, you know, her house, mm -hmm. you know, here in Reno. Um, but it's just been a lot of driving, guys, a lot of driving, and I know I'm not the one driving, you know, David is, he's a trooper, man. He, he drives, this man drives, you know, and it's constantly driving, but, you know, um, this is what it's about, guys, you know, going from one place to another. As soon as we literally got to this hotel here, we dropped our bags and we got onto a meeting with um, House Arrest Phoenix, whom... On a Zoom meeting. Yeah, and, you they know... They had a meeting at 7, we rushed over here, checked in... I think we went on about seven minutes late. Yeah, but we went, jumped, dropped our bags and jumped on, and we had not eaten since you know, the, you know this the breakfast since the breakfast, and we were we were hungry. It was almost eight o'clock at night. What no seven seven somewhere around the seven. The meeting was yeah. at seven. Yeah, so like seven o seven, we jumped on and we were hungry, so um, you know we jumped on and. I'm really, really blessed to see what the Lord is doing at, at House Arrest Phoenix. Yeah. I was just excited. Like, the excitement that I, I just felt from Tony and Michelle um, just got me so excited and, yeah. and filled me with joy. Um, and just to see the faces over there and just to see everybody Now that we got there. to know a lot of them at Oceanside, yeah. You know, seeing seeing them and I, I was just I was just ecstatic, guys, and blessed, yeah. tremendously blessed, and just to hear them at it, you know, um, I, I'm just I know the Lord is doing something, and I yeah. know that sooner than later, um, the Lord's just gonna be sending out more more people out. Yeah. You know, there's gonna be more of you around around the world. I know it. I know yeah. that there's going to be more house arrests in other places, yeah. and it's going to happen, guys. Well, I mean, we've been, like, starting from the service with the five women that graduated or, or finished. I don't know if graduated is the right word, the spiritual journey. And then we go to Yarrington and with Pastor Rick, 
and then we have this amazing breakfast, you know, and, and like you said, um, and then we met with the brother and the daughter and some of the things that God is doing in their life, you know, and rush over here and have this Zoom meeting, yeah. you know, with Phoenix, House of Rest Phoenix, you know, and, and, and just, man, we're just blessed, guys. And, and we appreciate you guys. We really, truly do. And, and I think even between you and I, you know, and, and us and our marriage, you know, these last two days, there, there has been breakthroughs with even us guys um, personally um, through prayer and just us with, with what God is doing with us and, and with me even. I think that this has been, um, I believe, a God-ordained trip mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. You know, um, I just truly believe that the Lord has that the Lord has allowed us to to take this 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 trip so that you know that He can just do things in in our lives personally and and I praise God for that, guys. You know, um, because He knows what He does. He He the, He is so strategic in everything that He does. For, for his glory, for his purpose, and he knows what he does. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful yeah. for all that he does. So, so grateful. Amen. So, guys. Um, One more time, I gotta. <laughs> guys. I'm, I'm so proud of my husband, guys. I am so proud of these, this man. These, these books are, are um, they're not easy to do. You know, the, the testimony I did, uh, Lost in the Storm, you know, as you guys know, I wrote most of that in solitary confinement. I just kind of rewrote it and fixed it up. Yeah. You know, but kind of telling your story, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It has its own challenges. But it's my story. You know what I mean? So nobody's going to correct me on my story. It's my yeah. story. This was a whole different thing. This is a teaching that's going to outlive me. You know, and I'm just like, put it this way. If, if I would ever do a book that was going to outlast me that was going to bring people to Christ and teach them the things they need to to fundamentally live as a Christian, not just a, a broken Christian, but a conquering Christian. It's this book, guys. So there was, I, I poured so much over this, you know, and truly, if you want to, if you love the studies we do, if you love the sermons I preach, if you love the Bible studies I give Wednesday, if you love the devotionals and the things we talk about, um, this is, if you get this, it's really going to bless us. But honestly, it's going to bless you too. You know, I, I poured my heart into this. If my heart was a sponge, it would have been like whoosh, everything poured into this because I, I really, truly believe that this is going to set so many people free. You know, so yeah. All right, guys. See you later. God bless you. Bye, Have guys. a great day. Have a blessed day. Make sure you, <coughs> if you want to try something different, put some cinnamon in your coffee. Probably too late now because you already drank it, but <laughs> tomorrow. So, all right, guys. All right, God guys. bless. We love you guys. Bye-bye. Here in a western town of Virginia City, Ponderosa Saloon and Mine. I'm going to add this babe to the devotional tonight. Just a little old western town. This is cool. I've been want. This is on a bucket list for me for the since I was a kid watching Bonanza with my dad. It reminds me of Columbia State Park, but bigger. This is a big city, man. I had no idea. I think I'm gonna go look for a gunfight. Look at this is a Mark Twain bookstore. Is it? Yeah. All right, guys. See you later.